Hi, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Workman, and I'm just going to go through a quick explanation of what isotopes are and how we can do what's called isotope notation to indicate how the number of uh, and type of subatomic particles can change in different isotopes of same elements. So let's get right into it here. Um, first of all, when you're doing something called isotope notation, uh, when you look at this, uh, it contains the symbol of the element, and that's what this X is right here. It's just a representative of a particular element. It doesn't mean any element in particular. And then what you'll see in isotope notation is a number written um, uh, up and to the left and another number written below it, sort of down and to the left of the symbol. And those two numbers are the mass number and the atomic numbers, respectively. Of course, the atomic number is always going to tell you the number of protons, and the mass number would tell you the total number of protons and neutrons. And in isotope notation, it's never a decimal number. It's always a whole number, because we're talking about a particular form of a particular element. Uh, on the periodic table, in contrast, this mass number will be an average, and it'll usually have some type of decimal um, with a lot of numbers after the decimal point associated with it. So let's look example, uh, at this example. This is an isotope of uh, the element called fluorine. And as you can see, the mass number here is 19, and the, uh, uh, the atomic number is 9. So if we go through this, I want you to think about this now. You can pause the video after you do this. But um, what I want you to do is take this information and figure out how many protons are we talking about, neutrons, electrons, what, what's the atomic number, what's the mass number. So go ahead and pause. Now that you're back, you should know that the number of protons for this isotope is 9, the number of neutrons is 10, and of course those two numbers together make 19. Uh, if this were an atom, it would have 9 electrons. Sorry, the spacing is off a little bit here. The atomic number, of course, is 9, and the mass number is 19. Let's look at another example. Well, actually, before we do that, what I want you to note here is that this number 19 is close to, but not exactly the same as what you see here. Now, this is the whole periodic table. This is the element fluorine, and as you can see, the mass number here is 18.9984032. And remember, that's an average. That's an average mass number. What that tells you is not all uh, examples of fluorine have 10 neutrons. There must be some with fewer than that because otherwise the average would not be below 19. Let's look at a couple more examples. Here's an element uh, called bromine. Look at this information and see if you can figure out the number of protons, neutrons, electrons. What's the atomic number? What's the mass number? All right, well, taken from this information over here, you should have been able to figure out that the number of protons is 35. The number of neutrons would be 45. The reason being is 35 plus 45 is equal to 80. The number of electrons, we're talking here about an atom, not an ion, so the number of electrons would be the same as the number of protons. Uh, the atomic number is 35, and of course the mass number is 80. Now, if we look at the periodic table and find bromine, look here, here's bromine. The average atomic mass is 79.904, so what does that mean? What it means is that there's got to be some uh, types of bromine out there with fewer than 45 neutrons. And with fewer than 45 neutrons, the mass number is below 80. And of course, we have an average that's below 80 for bromine, which gives us an indication that there's got to be some other forms of bromine out there with fewer neutrons. OK? Another example here. Uh, here's sodium. Can you figure it out, the number of protons, neutrons, uh, electrons, and the atomic number and mass number based on this information? OK, this is what it is. Uh, this is going to be 11 protons. Let's actually write this in here. Would be 11 protons. The number of neutrons for this particular isotope would be 12, because 11 plus 12 is 23. If this is a sodium atom, we have to have an equal number of electrons and protons. The atomic number is 11, and the mass number is 23. OK. Now. When we look at sodium, of course, sodium has this mass number, average mass number on the periodic table of 22.98976. Well, look at this. This is 23. Remember, in isotope notation, we're talking about a particular form, not the average mass, but the mass of this particular form. And the mass 
of this particular form of sodium is 23 because we have 11 protons and 12 neutrons, and the mass is, accumulate, is, is an accumulation of the number of protons and neutrons. All right, maybe you, what you can do is get out a periodic table and figure out the other way. If we have an element that has an atomic number of 23 and a mass number of 51, what's the number of protons, what's the number of neutrons, what's the number of electrons, and can you complete what the notation would be? Well, let's think about it. The atomic number is 23, so the number of protons must be 23. The mass number is 51, so if you take this number and you subtract this number from it, 51 minus 23 is 28. The number of electrons, if we're talking about an atom here, would be the same as the number of protons, so that's 23. And if you did the notation, what you're going to go ahead and do is find the element that has 23 protons on your periodic table. You look for the atomic number 23, and you'd see, of course, that it is this element. Uh, this is vanadium. We'll go back to the periodic table here. Vanadium is right here. Here's my atomic number on this periodic table. There's my symbol in vanadium. So going back through it, the notation would look like this. 51 up here, 23 down here, and the symbol, the capital V, right there. Well, there's a way we can name isotopes. And I'll, essentially all you do is you name the element, and then you put the mass number of that particular isotope after the name. Carbon has a couple of common isotopes. One is carbon-12. That's actually really common. And another one that we know about is something called carbon-14. There are a variety of isotopes of uranium, and one in particular that's pretty important for the way nuclear power reactors work is something called uranium-235. And so literally all you do uh, is just say the name of the element and then say the mass number after it or write the mass number uh, after the name of the element. Okay. Just so you understand this in terms of Bohr model structure, we've been spending some time drawing Bohr models. I wanted to show you some examples of isotopes of magnesium. We have three different isotopes here listed. There's magnesium-24, magnesium-25, and magnesium-26. Okay, so uh, that's one way we can note it. This is the way that the symbol looks when we do isotope notation. The mass number up here, the atomic number down here, and really what that means, you should be able to infer this, 12 protons, 12 neutrons, and in an atom, of course, the total number of electrons would be 12. This doesn't show that there's two electrons in the first orbital, and there would be eight electrons in the second orbital. And there, of course, would be two electrons in the third orbital for a total of 12. Now, I know you probably can't see that. I didn't draw it very well, but that's the idea. These diagrams just show, in general, the total number of electrons. Magnesium-25, of course, is magnesium-25 because it has 13 neutrons. Magnesium-26 is magnesium-26 because it has 14 neutrons. Now, all these forms of magnesium exist, but some are more common than others. And uh, the average that's on the periodic table, of course, is going to be reflective of the relative abundance of these particular isotopes. So if we go to the periodic table here and we look, this one here, 24.305, that, of course, is my average atomic mass for magnesium. And so what you should be able to figure out is probably this particular form of magnesium, magnesium 24, is a little bit more common than the other forms. But of course, magnesium 25 and 26 exist, which brings up this average above 24. These are some other examples of isotopes. This, there are three uh, known forms of hydrogen. The most common form of hydrogen is also known as protium, uh, and that's named for just the fact that it has one proton, and that's it. There's no neutrons. And so we'd write the isotope notation like this, 1 over 1, and then the H symbol. That's our ordinary common hydrogen. Deuterium is what's called heavy hydrogen. Um, and we'd write that 2 over 1 with hydrogen because, of course, the total number of nuclear particles in here is 2, and so that accumulates to 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. And this is tritium, which is another form of hydrogen. Notice the number of protons is, consi is consistent. If we change the number of protons, we change the identity of the element. Um, but we can change the number of neutrons, although it's uh, some of these different forms of hydrogen are, uh, of course, much more rare. Um, 3 over 1 would be the tritium form of hydrogen that has two proton, excuse me, one proton and two neutrons. 
this is a form of hydrogen that's actually radioactive. Uh, and we, we just label it you know, hydrogen 1 or hydrogen 2 or hydrogen 3 if we were doing uh, the standard form of isotope notation after that. Um, and of course, when we look at hydrogen on the periodic table, the average atomic mass is slightly above 1, uh, which should be an indicator to you that this form of hydrogen is much more common, although you know, the average being slightly above 1, that comes from the fact that these other forms of hydrogen, in fact, exist. So that's a quick little explanation of uh, isotopes and how to draw the notation and the symbols for isotope notation. Uh, thanks, everyone. That's it. Have a good day. Thank you.